If the audio in this video is really bad, that's because I'm recording in a bathroom because someone outside is mowing, because of course they are. So today we're going to be looking at a Jewish empire, where Israel forms an empire. They're able to do this because they already have a strong military, and they just got some new Arab recognizers. Oman, the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, um, I'm pretty sure Turkey already recognizes them. Um, I think Azerbaijan doesn't recognize them, but in this world they do. As well as Eritrea and Djibouti, and uh, Somaliland also rec decides to recognize them. And, wow, and they also even get Tunisia in on this. So with this, Israel is now, like, more open, and they can have more allies and stuff. So they, so they're, so now, in the brinks of war, they're going to be forming an empire. So first what happens is Syria decides to declare war on Israel, as well as Lebanon and Palestine. Um, and the, and the, C S the Syrian Democratic Forces, after crushing, after crushing the Syrian ISIS members, um, we have them sign that once, that once we defeat these guys, we we might consider to reunite and become like states and stuff. So they decide to do that. Israel walks into Palestine and announces a dark blue because it's disputed territory. Personally, I think both should coexist peacefully, but if I had to choose one, Israel. So first we have Israel um, breezing through Palestine using their extremely strong force. Like seriously, look up what they do. Do not ever become a mafia boss in Israel. They will kill you. And there goes the mower. Wow. We then have them pushing up into Lebanon in an extreme sweep of Blitzkrieg that took like two weeks almost. Um, and then we have them also getting into Syria. Um, and now, if you, if you might be wondering, well, this is unrealistic. Well, one, it is. But in another reason why you might think it's unrealistic is because they're teaming with the SDA, is the Syrian Democratic Forces. Well, fun fact, the S. The Syrian Democratic Forces actually like Israel, despite them being two completely different religions in two completely different countries. So you have Israel continuing their push up into Syria, and the and the Syrian Democratic Forces also decide to follow suit by trying to encircle Syria um, continuously. I'm pretty sure their capital is like right here. So with this, we see Israel and the SDF connecting with each other um, and wiping out the capital. Now, I don't... If you've seen it in any of my error mapping videos, you know I don't really know where it is, where the capitals are, but whatever. Eventually, um, the Syrian government finally surrenders, and we have a pretty cool uh, united Syria, I guess we could say, as well as being united with Israel. Um, so with this, um, I'm also, by the way, for this video, uh, just to tell you, I'm not trying to get political or anything, I'm just saying... And if you want to talk about that with me in the comments, we can have a friendly chat on why your opinion is usually wrong. Um, <laughs> your opinion, my, my opinion is an objective fact. P -p don't, I, it's usually, usually the, my opinion is an objective fact isn't a good argument, but it can be sometimes, but whatever. So, with that whole rant out of the way, yeah, that was just to save time so I could color in Syria as Israel controlled. So um yeah um now the Syria the Syria land is the Syrian state is more just so Arabs from Palestine and Lebanon can kind of like flee into Syria because uh you know like Israel is mainly is is a Jewish nation it's actually I think it might be one of the only Jewish nations in the world if not the only one but whatever so now we have a very noticeable Israel on the map even if you zoom out quite a bit so now we have um Egypt understandably being kind of mad, and they decide to unrecognize Israel. So Israel does the most logical thing and marches right into Egypt in a surprise attack. With this, um, they also um kill a lot of mafia bosses because that's just their thing, and they are able to take um Egypt's uh, I think it's the Sinai Peninsula. Yeah, the Sinai Peninsula. I'm pretty sure. Um, so they take it, and with this, they gain control to the Suez Canal. With this, they also decide to occupy some of the coastal regions of of um egypt and seeing their capital being threatened now they're getting pretty scared obviously and after the full capturing of the peninsula we have them we have um egypt completely surrendering and i just look at that on, on the 420 timestamp. <laughs> nice funny weed number um so after israel annexes it in, in about four weeks in about four weeks and, and 20 minutes um we have them um put setting the laws at we joke time at we joke times yeah, I don't know. I was just hungry for a joke there. With this, Israel does take a little bit more out of Egypt than they actually got because screw is because screw Egypt. I guess why not? With this, we have them gaining um, more access to the Red Sea, um, which 
Now, if you don't know, most like North African countries, the only good part about them is their coast. Because, you know, that's the only thing that they can really get from. And it's their only real source of water. So, losing a lot of coast in the in the Suez Canal, where ships really like to get stuck in, isn't too good for Egypt. So, there might be some rebellions in the Egyptian, in the Israel-Egypt state, I guess you could call it. But eventually, we do have Israel, um, finally, after lots of rebellions, fully annexing their Egyptian lands. I said that really weird, lands. Like a mentally challenged person. <coughs> Obvious joke, but people will probably take too seri- too seriously, but whatever. Um, so yeah, Israel takes Egypt. And yes, I am extending time because I need to color it in. So now once again, even more noticeable Israel. And now we have him going to war with Jordan, who's understandably a little unhappy. Um, so with this, Jordan um decides to launch a surprise attack in on Israel. Um Jordan um, claims that Palestine and all the other countries and places that Israel has taken are independent, except for the except for Syria, which they they don't really care about. But they're going to push into it anyway because it's their own agenda, and why not? So with this, the surprise attack after Jordan builds up their military is pretty bad. They're able to cut the Syrian state from the Israel state, and now Israel's in a bit of a pickle after um, another um, invasion has been launched in, because Israel is getting a bit tired, but they still have a massive army. With this, Israel starts pushing out um, out into Jordan and even encircles quite a lot of their land. And um, they send an ultimate to Jordan saying that if you take out all of your troops right now, we'll just take the lands that we got, nothing else, and you won't have to pay reparations. So with this, Jordan decides to agree. Although they will pay a couple of reparations um, to get a bit more land, so they'll pay a couple of reparations more land for them. Um, so with this, we have a very small Jordan. And Israel was kind of hoping for this war to go on a little bit longer so they could got could have gotten some more land to connect with their neighbors a bit more. But they're okay with this because war is just an awful thing. Apparently, apparently some people don't notice that. <coughs> but whatever. And now we have Israel actually going to war with a formidable competitor. We have them going to war with Iraq. With this... um. They decided, hey, USA, you want to get on this war? They're like, no, please, please leave us alone. We'll go we'll go to war with ISIS if you help us out. And we're like, yeah, nah, I'm not sure. We'll give you some free oil. Okay! 